Hey dudes, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, I'm remaking the second recipe video I ever did. That is fish tacos. Can you believe it's been that long since I ate some fish tacos? I mean, come on. So this, this is a great summertime recipe. It comes together in a cinch. It's nice, it's refreshing, it's light so that you can keep your beach body figure, right? It's totally working on me. So I'm really excited to share it with you, especially because that old video, the sound was like totally effed up, dudes. <laughs> on the fish taco toppin. Taco toppin was actually the old Aztec name for this. So I'm gonna update my slaw a little bit. I've got some green cabbage that I shredded up, some white onion that's diced, and some jicama. So this is the root. It's kind of starchy. It's kind of got a the texture of like a raw potato, but it's sweet, kind of like an apple and kind of mild. Hmm. So it adds a nice little flavor to the slaw. Um, got that in there. Sorry, my mouth's full. And then I'm gonna add some salt. This is a super duper simple coleslaw recipe. All we're gonna use is salt and lime juice to get it softened up, to get that cabbage kind of releasing some water and get it nice and tender so we can eat it raw. Everyone's on this raw diet thing. Whatever. But you know, some raw vegetables obviously are good for you. Like salad, like celery sticks like carrot sticks. Okay, so that's about a teaspoon of salt. Get that kind of tossed around with my tongs. Get your tossing tongs out. You could use your hands also. Nature's tongs. Use a bigger bowl than I did so you don't have to worry about it flopping out everywhere. Okay, so salt's coating everything. Now we're gonna just squeeze in some lime juice. And if you are be stricken by horribly high lime prices, you can use some lemon juice. Just don't tell anyone. I really expected more juice from that lime since I paid 33 cents for it. Hopefully that was close to two tablespoons. We'll get that tossed around. Toss that salad. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some cilantro or fresh coriander if you are British. And I don't bother pulling off the stems for cilantro. I just chop it up really, really fine because there's a lot of flavor in the stems, actually. So you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but I can see with my little eye, I spy, that the cabbage has already started to soften up just with that little bit of motion in the ocean. So I'm just gonna set this aside and work on some other stuff and just leave it at room temperature and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. You'll be amazed. Oh my God, you'll be like, wow, you're a genius. Okay, for the mayonnaise sauce, this is a kind of an update. I've got some mayonnaise here. I'm going to add some minced chipotle peppers. So chipotle in adobo, they come in a little can that's like a dollar. And it's the in this adobo sauce that's kind of a sweet and slightly vinegary, but mostly sweet and hot. They're smoked jalapeno peppers and then they're put in this adobo sauce. So. Whenever I get a jar home, I like to transfer, or a little can home, I like to transfer it into a, a jar and keep it in the fridge and then they'll stay like that forever. So they're pretty spicy. I'm gonna start with half of one and just mince it up. And it pretty much just turns into a paste as you're mincing it. You know what, Fuck it. I'm just gonna put all of it in there. I like a spicy. All minced up, that's about a tablespoon of chipotle in adobo. Plop that in with some mayonnaise. Lick your finger, because who cares? I'm only cooking for myself, and this guy, he doesn't give a shit. Okay, I'm gonna add some lime juice, so about a tablespoon of that. Some sal, and I'm gonna add a little bit of malt vinegar, which is really, really good on fried fish. Um, I don't know, it smells vinegary, but it's kind of, nutty and sweet. Anyway, if you can't find this, then you can just add some more lime juice. It's just gonna add a little bit of tartness, but also it's kind of nice because the whole fish connection. Then we're gonna mix this up. So the sourness of the vinegar and the lime juice should balance out the heat of the chipotle pretty well. But if it's still a little bit too spicy for you, I would recommend that you add a little bit of honey or sugar um, to sort of temper that heat a little bit. But this tastes pretty good to me. Mm. Thumbs up. So we'll just set this aside and start working on the fish. So I haven't changed anything from the original recipe. 
as far as the seasonings and the spices that I'm putting on it. So the two main things here are some cumin seeds and some anise. This is not star anise, it's just anise seed. And it's kind of got a licorice-y, fennel-y flavor. If you can't find it, you can leave it out, but it does go really, really nicely with fish. And then some whole cumin seed. So those two, and some chili powder. And when I say chili powder, me personally, I just mean like ground up ancho chilies or ground up New Mexico chilies. I don't mean like a commercial brand of chili powder that has garlic salt and all this stuff mixed into it. Although if that's what you can find and that's what you have in your pantry, that is totally, totally fine. Please don't worry about it. A little mortar and pestle, and you can use pre-ground spices if you want, but you know me, I like to make things hard on myself. So put our whole spices in and crush them up. Good. And then I'm gonna add my chili powder, which is already ground, thank God. And salt and pepper. Cause duh, what's life without salt and pepper? We wouldn't have that song push it for one thing. Mixed up. Okay, now for the breading, breading part. Breading, breading, weirdo. I'm just using some cornmeal. If you are in another country, that's not the best country in the world, America. Just kidding. <laughs> if you are in another country and you don't have cornmeal, you can use fine polenta. It's basically the same thing. Okay, we're gonna add this to that and mix it around. It's combined. Now we're gonna do the fish. So I did the fish last so that I don't have to wash my cutting board in between. I'm not getting like raw fish juice on things. <laughs> fish juice. Mm. I'm using some wild snapper, but you can use pretty much any like lightish fish. I mean, you probably could use salmon or something like that too. Any old kind of fish that you like. And I asked the fishmonger if he would skin it for me. So these are skinless and boneless. So I'm just gonna cut them into pieces, maybe an inch wide by however long it is. So that usually ends up being about the right size to go into a taco. So you got your fish chunks, and then we're just gonna toss them around in this cornmeal mixture just to coat it. We don't really need anything to help adhere the cornmeal, just the moisture from the fish will keep it on there. Moist fish. And you can do this fish coating part ahead of time too and just cover them and leave them in the fridge and up to a couple hours and that'll help the coating stick on them better too if you can leave them sit for a while. Okay, so fish is all coated. I'm just gonna let it sit here in my little dish for just as long as it takes to heat up a skillet with some oil in it and then we'll get to frying the fish. It's a fish fry party. All right, so you wanna heat your pan up over kind of a medium or medium high heat and then add maybe two tablespoons of canola oil or corn oil or peanut oil, something kind of neutral with a high smoke point. Swirl it around like a lava lamp. Don't get all high and then get distracted. And then you wanna kind of cook your fish in two batches Cook the smaller pieces with the smaller pieces and the bigger ones with the bigger ones. And when you lay it in the hot oil, kind of lay it away from you just in case so you don't splatter hot oil on your beautiful face. Make Jesus real sad. Let's squeeze that one in over there. So they'll probably just take about two to three minutes on each side, depending on the size. And with thicker fillets like the snapper, you might need to do more than just two sides and go ahead and get the side sides cooked as well. Once they're nice and brown on every side, we can take them out. And when you break one open, the inside should be flaky like that. And these are super duper hot right now, so you wanna let them cool off for a few minutes. And while that's happening, we can heat up our tortillas. Fishes, oh yay, okay. Put some of that on there. Some of our chipotle mayo sauce. So if you're interested, be sure to check out the original fish taco video for some 
really hilarious fish taco jokes. Um, and also make sure to check out highlycooking.com for this printable recipe and all of my recipes. And if you make this, please tag me on Instagram or Twitter and send me a picture because I love to see that. And all right, look at that. It's so gorgeous, it's so colorful. Mm. Mm hmm. I did it again. You're welcome. All right, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> cool.